Welcome to Chris Cook for you too. How many times have you gone into a restaurant and you've ordered as an appetizer the onion blossom? And it tastes so good. That's one of my favorite appetizers to order when I go into a restaurant. But you don't know how to cook it at home. Well, today, that's what we're doing. We're doing onion blossom. And I'm going to show you exactly how to cook it at home. Let's get started. You're going to need, of course, the onion. Now, if you use a Bermuda onion, which is a big yellow onion, it's much sweeter to prepare the onion blossom. But whichever one you have would work out just fine. You're going to need some flour, milk, cornstarch, garlic powder, cayenne pepper, which is red pepper, paprika, and salt. Now, if you want, and of course you need two eggs. Now, in order to make your dipping sauce for your onion blossom, you're going to need mayo, ketchup, paprika, salt, and a little bit of lemon. So before we get started, I'm going to make the sauce real quick and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator. Now this is a fast dish, very easy, but if you're having company over, it's the perfect little appetizer to bring out for your guests. So here I'm taking about three tablespoons of mayo to the three tablespoons of mayo I'm going to add about a fourth of a teaspoon of paprika I'm going to add one and a half tablespoons of ketchup a little bit of salt just about a pinch and I'm going to add some fresh lemon. And you can add a zest to the lemon if you want to. You can just go ahead and add that. This is going to be about a tablespoonful. And it's better to put your hand over your lemon so that you don't get those seeds down over in there. But I didn't do it. But when you make yours, you can do it. Okay, now we're going to stir this up. And this is your dipping sauce for your onion blossom. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put this in the refrigerator and I'm going to allow it to stay there for about 15 minutes. And that's going to be how long it's going to actually take us in order to get the onion actually prepared. Now, in addition to these ingredients, of course, you're going to need some cooking oil in order to actually fry up your uh, onion blossom. Now, for your flour, you're going to need to mix one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch, a half taste, ta a half teaspoon, I'm sorry, of salt. If you like a kick, you can put in some ground red pepper or cayenne pepper. If you don't want a kick to it, you don't have to. And I'm going to put in about a fourth of a teaspoonful of that. And you're going to need some granulated garlic. And I'm going to put about a fourth of a teaspoon of that. Now I'm going to mix this all together. And I can go away and mix this together because you already see the ingredients that you need to put into it. So we're going to dip this in the flour. Then we're going to dip it into the egg batter. Then we're going to dip it back into the flour. And then we're going to go ahead and fry it. Now, in order to dip it into the egg batter, for the egg batter, you're going to need two eggs, which is what I have in here and a half cup of milk. Depending on how many, um, how many actual um, onions you have, I'm gonna do two. 
So that's all you're going to need for that, and you're going to blend it well. So I'm going to, that's what, that's all that you need. We have our dipping sauce, which I'm going to put that in the refrigerator, and we have our egg batter, and we have our flour mixture. Now I'm going to go away, get my working space all cleaned up, and I'll be right back. Okay, now we're back, and I've already done one onion. I've already cut it, and I'm going to show you how to cut this real quick. So what you want to do is there's two parts, the part that comes up out of the ground, and, of course, there is the head of it. So what you want to do is you want to cut that flat. So you want to cut that straight across. Okay? See, I did that. You want to cut that off. And once you cut that off, you want to peel off that outer skin. See it? So you just want to peel it down all the way around. Now, once you get this peeled off, the next part is a little tricky. Okay? Now, once you have all of that peeled down, like I got this, okay, you're going to draw it up and you're going to cut it as close as you can to cutting the hole away from the onion, but without separating the onion. Okay? See how I did that? And that's the same way I'm going to do this. So you want to stay real close to the hole. See the holes there? You want to stay real close to them. And you want to just cut that off. See? There. Now, once you cut that off, your onion is still whole and intact because you just cut that off. So once you cut that off, then you want to start making plus signs. But you don't want to take them all the way down. You want to take them to about here. So you don't want to bring them all the way down here. You want to bring it to about here so that they will not separate. So you're going to go down and you're going to be careful. You're going to make a plus sign. So I've cut it one way. Now I'm going to cut it the other way. Okay. Now, once I've made that plus sign, I'm going to go in, in between my cut. This is my cut. I'm going to go to the middle of the cut, and I'm going to make another plus sign. So this is my plus sign going this way. And then this is my plus sign going the other way. There you have it. Now how simple and easy was that? It was real easy. Now you're going to just kind of separate your leaves a little bit. You're going to kind of fan it back. And you're going to go all the way around taking it a loose. Now notice I have not separated it from the bottom part of my onion. And you can fan it out, you know, if that's what you choose to do. It doesn't matter. Now it's going to open up as it actually um, fries up. It's going to open up. Okay, now once you get that done, and the closer you go down to the bottom, the more you're going to be able to open out your fan, but just be careful because it's going to spread out anyway. Because you don't want to pull it apart and then one of these come off, okay? Now, once you've done that, You're going to take your flour. I guess I can start with this one. Because that was the first one I did. And you're going to put flour all through here. Okay. And it's really not that hard to do. Now, 
once you get your flour all through, I'm going to turn this upside down and I'm going to shake some of that flour out. Okay. Now, once I get that flour shook out, I'm going to go ahead and dip it. into my egg mixture. Now, once I get that dipped in my egg mixture, I'm gonna bring it back and put flour in it. Now you want to heat your your um, your cooking oil. Once I get this all done, okay. Okay, now this is ready to go into the oil, okay? And you can dust it, you know, just a little bit to get some of that flour. So I'm going to go ahead and do up the second one. And once I get this done up, same procedure, I'm going to meet you at the stove. Now you can open it out just a little, but you don't want to open it out too much because you don't want to tear your leaves off. So you're going to get that flour down in there to help coat. And what's helping the flour to stick right now, remember an onion is not dry. It has some juices down in there. So that's helping it to stick right now. Once I get that done, then I'm going to go ahead and flour, egg it up, and then I'm going to put it back in the flour. Egg it up. Oops. Once I get it all egged up, put it back in the flour and do it all over again. You might want to use gloves, but... I mean, I'm always sticking my hands in food like that, so I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so I'm going to get this one all done the same way. And when I get it all done, I'll meet you at the stove. Be right back. Okay, now I'm at the stove. Here is my onion, so I'm going to go ahead and set my onion down into the cooking oil. Notice that I have enough cooking oil in here for this to be submerged in cooking oil. So, alrighty. Now it's in the cooking oil, and it's kind of it's gonna come up to temperature. Okay. This was just a little bit before so I could get it submerged without grease going everywhere, okay? So I'm going to allow this to cook for about, I don't know, probably about four minutes, maybe five. And then when I come back, I'll take it out and show you what it looks like. Be right back. But see how it's coming up to temperature? Because once I got it in, then I just turned the temperature up just a little bit. So that my grease would not splatter. So, okay, now that. because I had enough grease inside of my pot, I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. It's not necessary for me to turn this over, but if you don't have, like, if you're cooking with a limited amount of grease, you're gonna have to turn that over because this side is going to need to get done as well. But this is done. And what made the flour adhere so good is the fact that I had the, take it out, there we go, 
I'm going to put the other one in. The, what made the flour adhere so good is the fact that we put the cornstarch in it. Okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and put the second one over into my cooking oil. And you don't want to be moving it around. Once you get it in there, it takes about six to seven minutes in order for it to cook. So once you get it in there, just leave it in there until it gets done. I have something else cooking on the other side. Okay. So I'm going to leave it in there and I'll be right back. Okay, up. now I'm back. And this one I turned upside down because when you turn it, you know, over, see how I had this one over, it'll fan out a lot more than if you just leave it straight so I turned this one upside down so that it could go ahead and fry because it was a little bit larger than the other one anyway so what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow these two to drain I'll get up. there you go it's hot okay. there you go so I'm gonna allow these two to drain and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna meet you at the table be right back Okay, now I'm back and I'm at my table and here are the two uh, onion blossoms along with the dipping sauce. And one of my viewers say that you never try your meals in front of us. You just always go away. So I'm going to try this in front of you. And I'm going to tell you, I love... Try to get one. And I'm going to dip it and I'm going to eat it. Oh my goodness. That is so good. I think that if you try this as an appetizer, you are going to truly, truly enjoy it. This is real good. And that's the problem when you try it in front of people. You still have um, food in your mouth. So forgive me for having the food in my mouth. But this is so good. It's so quick and so easy. And I really do think that you're truly going to enjoy it. And as always, thank you for watching Chris Cook for you too. Before I end this video, my new book is coming out October the 1st, the first week of October. It will have this menu in it, I'm sorry, this dish in it, as it will have a lot of dishes in it. I think you're truly going to enjoy 125 recipes, and I'm trying to get it out before the holiday season hit. Because there's a special little section in there that's going to be all about Thanksgiving. So make certain that you put that book on your agenda. Now, as always, thank you for watching Chris Cook for YouTube. Bye.